coffee, energy drinks, and pre-workouts. Just generally speaking, your overall opinion, what do you think is the worst of all three of them? Wow. Look, it, <laughs> I mean, what, what a question. Look, it, it depends on the ingredients. Um, so okay. I, I also produce a pre-workout, and it's one that you can make. You, you guys can mix it yourself. Um, all I've done is, you know, it, the, the, the recipe isn't copywritten. You know, I don't own the rights or anything to it. It's just I've just put it, it I've mixed it together for, for people to use for, for um, easeability. Um, it contains MCT, uh, citrulline malate, uh, taurine, um, L-arginine, and something else. What else is in there? My mind's gone blank. But it, it's 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 a combo. Citrulline malate, uh, two one, two one or four one. Um, so that is the one that we use is currently two one. But what I would recommend if you can find it is citrulline base, which is uh, that's going to be more potent. It is more expensive, um, but you mix these amino acids together and you have um, a potent pre-workout um, that will fuel your workout and it's non-stim. Uh, wow. It contains, it, it's sweet because of the citrulline, um, but it's non-stim. It doesn't contain any caffeine or anything else, no sugar. And you can mix it, you can buy these items anywhere and you can mix them and you can adjust it to suit uh, and it's super, super easy. So if, if the pre-workout were that type of pre-workout, then I would argue that that is more beneficial or at least less damaging. And in fact, it, is, it isn't damaging, depending on the ratios, but that type of pre-workout would be fine. Once you start going into the realms of sugar and stuff and, and you know, seed oils and, and artificials, then, then they're not so good. Um, uh, we've got coffee. Um, look, I've drunk coffee all of my adult life. I've recently quit coffee, as you know. Um, coffee contains yep. a compound called acrylamide, which is, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm still coffee-free. <laughs> <laughs> Acrylamide is a known carcinogen and it's uh, it's a known neuro um, uh, toxin. So if you all wow. consume caffeine, you know, uh, for, for many years, it's quite likely you'll suffer with some sort of problems. Aches and pains that you think are to do with training are to do with this neurotoxicity. Uh, if you're drinking one or two cups a day, the likelihood is that you're not going to suffer with anything. Um, now, caffeine is a known ergogenic aid and what that means is that it will increase or help increase athletic performance um it uh, blocks the adenosine and, receptor and, and, and fat fat oxidation too and right fat, oh, yeah so if you were to drink so, so it, so it kind of helps you burn fat better and yes. it makes you think that you have energy even if you don't have energy so you're kind of faking yourself out Wait, so, so which is a double-edged sword so yes it, it's a fat yeah. mobilizer so if you were to consume caffeine before a workout you will burn more fat um how much fat? I mean, we're not, are we talking this much, this much? You know, you, you, we can't quantify, but it is a fat mobilizer and it does help burn fat. And it's been a tool for me for many years. So I'm not going to tell anyone off if they if they wanted to consume coffee. Um, you know, bar the acrylamide, it also contains polyphenols, which are, are damage into the body and so on and so forth. But it's all about levels, um, you know, and how deep you want to go down this rabbit hole. You and I are so deep in the rabbit hole that we've come out the other end. Um, and it's only recently, you know, probably three or four months ago, maybe that I've quit coffee. So I'm not in any position to tell anybody not to drink their coffee. But what I will do is pass on the information that I've acquired over, over many years. And that is that the overconsumption of coffee is damaging. It's a neurotoxin. Um, you don't yeah. want to consume too much. So use it sparingly. If you're consuming one to two cups a day, it's quite likely that you won't have issues. If you suffer with things like epilepsy, then caffeine or coffee, I should say, is, is one that isn't for you. Um, it's also counterintuitive to be in ketogenic to a degree in regards to that glutamate to GABA ratio. Because remember uh, earlier on, I mentioned that beta hydroxybutyrate increases adenosine, which... Um, it controls the neurotransmitters, so it, it calms the brain, so it reduces uh, neuro excitability. Um, well, caffeine does the opposite. So caffeine binds to the adenosine receptor, so then adenosine cannot bind to the receptor, and then this blocks our body's ability to tell us that we are tired. So it doesn't give us energy, but it just blocks our body's ability to tell us that we're exhausted, which can cause problems of its own because, you know, it, it leads to that neuro excitability. It throws the glutamate to GABA ratio out. This leads to anxiety and depression um, as well as mm -hmm. other neurological problems. So, you know, there are caveats to this, but again, coffee or caffeine is a tool. Um, 
if you are going to consume caffeine, I would consume it through a supplement form over through a coffee form because the supplement form does not contain acrylamide. Um, so this is what's in the, the ketones that I use. So the, the raspberry bomb that I take contains caffeine, but it does not contain acrylamide. So I'm, I'm getting the, 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 the hit of the caffeine, which helps with the, st with the stimulation. It also works synergistically with the ketones and the MCT to ramp up its its bioavailability. Wow. Um, so it works better, but then you're not suffering with the, the acrylamide um, you know, issues. So there are levers to pull is my point to this. But um, what was the third, sorry, code? Coffee, pre-workout and... Coffee, pre-workout, and I already know that I'm going to hell for even talking to you about this one, but uh, uh, this is called a energy prime drinks. energy drink. Yeah, my wife and I are both fans of them. Man, like, they're bomb, dude. Like, they're delicious. These things were the single hardest thing for me to cut last time that I did the lion diet. It was like, there were some days I didn't want to get out of bed, man, <laughs> for, like the, for, like, the first couple of days. And then uh, after 30 days of not having energy drinks, man, like, I just felt like a beast. Like, I felt like a new person. And then I think one of the worst decisions I ever did was start start drinking them again. So, yeah, I don't know. It sucked cutting them before, it was, but it'll suck cutting them again um and we can and we can do it we've already 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 done it once so um the ingredients on here are carbonated filtered water coconut water from concentrate uh citric acid natural flavor calcium lactate magnesium citrate potassium uh, potassium citrate sodium citrate caffeine sucralose uh potassium sorbate sodium benzoate and uh some b vitamins that's basically it so look, you know, there's there are worse ingredients out there. Um, that brand in particular is incredibly expensive, and I think you would find a far cheaper one available that would be more beneficial. Um, so okay. gross, not good. The potassium sorbate damages DNA um, through a process called clastogenesis. Um, so ultimately, that's not good. Um, you know, some of the other bits in there are not too bad, but we don't want to consume excessive amounts of calcium. Um, at least in, in most cases. So anything that contains calcium, we want to try to keep away because we need to offset this with magnesium. Again, calcium can lead to uh, neuroexcitability and, and lead to things like migraines and cause problems with um, uh, epilepsy. Uh, but basically anything that's damaging that, that balance in the brain uh, isn't good for us. The cell wants a one-to-one -one ratio roughly. <laughs>